This school time is about why I refuse to ever live in a college dorm room. So my sophomore year, I was able to get a room with my best friend, Tiana. I was happy because we always talked about getting a room together, but sooner or later, I realized it was a big mistake. There was one time I let her borrow my Ugg boots because it was cold outside, but she started wearing them every day. When she finally returned them, they were wet and dirty. I was irritated, and she said that she would give me the money to get new ones, but she never did. She then started asking if she could borrow a shirt. Me being nice, I let her, but she then started taking advantage. Girl was taking all of my things without permission. My jacket, pants, shorts, everything. And she wouldn't even clean them before giving them back to me. I confronted her about it, and she got mad at me saying it wasn't a big deal. A couple weeks later, I confronted her again about my things going missing, and she pretended not to know. When she turned around to leave the room, I looked down, and the bitch stole my damn underwear. This story time is how I was scammed out of $20,000. Yes, $20,000. At the time, I was 26, and I was looking for ways for making extra money on the side. So basically, I was looking into investing my money into some sort of stock or company. I didn't know much about investing, but I would hear people talk about it all the time. A couple weeks later, I had a friend, and we're going to call him David. He invited me into an investment club presentation for multiple business. I was new to all of this, so I wanted to take a look at what he was talking about. There was one particular company that had an app for working out, and they sold workout clothing and weights. I thought their pitch was great and chose to speak with them. After weeks of discussion, there were contracts and everything. Me and a couple people invested into this company with our money, but the company members went ghost at the week. And this is when it gets crazy, like for part two. This is part two story time of how I was scammed out of $20,000. So, like I said earlier, there was a particular workout app company I invested into. We filled out contracts. I gave them my part of the investment, which was $20,000. But after a couple days, they completely went ghost. I tried reaching out to the other people that supposedly invested but none of them got back to me. I was so confused. So then I did my research in a company, which I should have done before, but there was no information. So then I went and talked to my friend David about it. When I showed him the contracts and everything they told me about, he basically told me that the contracts were fake and they scared me. We then went searching up the other investors and it was like they didn't even exist. I realized that everyone I was speaking with were all actors. Even the investors were fake. The whole company was a scam and I was scammed out of $20,000. Be careful out there. Do your research. Story time of how my parents forced me to marry a 40 year old man when I was 14. For most people from my country, it is called arranged marriage and it happened to a lot of girls. My family was poor, but the guy I was marrying had a lot of money and promised to take care of me and my family. He also had a six year old son, but he didn't like me. I had met him once before when my mother introduced him to us. She allowed me to stay with him alone. He was very touchy. He told me I was very beautiful and would spoil me because pretty girls like me deserve pretty things. After he left, I told my parents that I was scared to marry him and that I'll do more housework and I'll take care of my other little sisters. My father yelled at me and told me no. So the next week, I went throughout the whole wedding crying. My mom told me to stop because I was messing up my makeup. After we had got married, a couple months later, he grew very abusive. Part two. This is part two of how my parents forced me to marry a 40-year-old man, and I was 14. So we got married, and a couple months into the relationship, he became abusive. Whenever my food tasted nasty or something wasn't clean right, he called me a lazy wife and told me I was no good and he should have married someone else. His six-year-old son had no respect for me. The little boy scratched me, would yell at me, throw stuff at me, and my husband wouldn't do anything about it. I would tell him that I didn't like how his son was treating me, and he stood up and tells me to stay in my place and tells me I'm just a bad mother. I'd cry every night, wishing I could go back home to my mother and father. Two years later, when I turned 16, I found out I was pregnant. He was so happy about it, and for once, he treated me so sweet. He would cook for me, clean, and told his son to be nice because his little brother was on him. When we found out the baby was a girl, he got mad and walked out on me. Part three will be up next. This is part three of how my parents forced me to marry a 40-year-old man and I was 14. So my husband was excited that I was pregnant, but when he found out I was having a baby girl, he got very upset and walked out of the room. When we got home, he started treating me nasty again. 
He then started putting his hands on me. He was just very angry at me and never wanted to see his daughter. It took him three weeks before picking her up. But even then, he wanted nothing to do with her. As years went on, I became quiet and I wouldn't speak to him. I would just make sure our home was clean and the children were taken care of. He would just get upset with me that I wouldn't speak to him and accuse me of cheating. He claimed that I was sleeping with other men and that our daughter is probably not even his child. I never understood why because I was always home because he didn't allow me to go out. But I soon realized he only accused me of cheating because he was cheating the entire time. Part 4 is coming up soon. This is part 4 of how my parents forced me to marry a 40 year old man and I was 14. My husband would always accuse me of cheating but I found out he only accused me because he was cheating on me the entire time. Ended up finding out because his son told me. And like I said earlier, his son never liked me in the first place. So when I had made him upset, he randomly said that's why my dad has a new one. I was off about it so I went to ask my husband about it and he admitted to it. He was very blunt about it and he told me it was because the lady tempted him. I believed him at the time, but as time grew on, I started to become very insecure. I'd do whatever he want, but it was never good enough because he still kept stepping out of our marriage. On my 19th birthday is when I realized I had to figure out a way for me and my daughter to leave him. He didn't even say happy birthday to me, and that was my husband. I had no money, I didn't own anything, but I took a chance, so I packed whatever I could, and I planned for me Place and my daughter to move away while we were working. This is part five of how my parents forced me to marry a 20 year old man and I was 14. So like I said before, I made a plan for me and my daughter to run away while he went to work. When he left, I packed up food, clothes, and took money that we saved up just in case something happened. I woke my daughter up out of her sleep and I told her we need to go. I woke her son up and I told him we were going to the store and that we would be right back. He went right back to sleep and I gathered our things and took me and my daughter to the train station. She asked where we were going and I told her we were going to see our other family. When we got on the train, my daughter went to sleep and I cried because of all the pain I was put through with my husband. I left and I wasn't able to say goodbye to my mother, father, or any of my younger sisters. I didn't want any of them to know because I knew they were going to try to send me back. And leaving was the best decision that I made of my life. It's now been 23 years and I found my now husband and we're living a better life. And I bless God for allowing me to make this story time is how my house caught on fire the night before Christmas. By the way, I was nine at the time. So like always, everyone wrapped their gifts and put it underneath the Christmas tree. And I can remember that year, my parents really went all out for Christmas. They decorated all around the house and inside. My mom went as far as putting lights all over the railings. There were many gifts under the tree and I seen that most were for me and I was really excited. By the way, I'm the only child, but my cousins were going to come over also. So there were gifts for them too. After everything was decorated, my mom cooked the night before and everyone went to sleep. In the middle of the night, I get shaken by my dad telling me that we need to get out of the house. I was so confused until I walked outside of my room and the whole second floor was smoking. When we ran downstairs, my living room and kitchen was on fire and it was so traumatizing to see. And I'll explain why my house caught on fire in part two. So come back for part two. This is part two of how my house caught on fire the night before Christmas. So like I said before, I was woken up in the middle of the night by my dad telling me that we needed to get out of the house. And the first floor was in flames, but we managed to make it out. When we left, we immediately went to my grandma's house. I asked my parents, why did our house catch on fire? And my grandma sent me away to go play in her indoor porch. I was upset because all the presents were gone and I was pretty sure my bedroom was destroyed. When I was sitting in the porch, I overheard the adults conversation. And remember how I told you guys my parents went all out with decorations? Well, something happened to one of the Christmas lights cables and it caught on fire and it spread all throughout the house. I was upset, of course, but good thing my dad was up. If not, we probably all would have been burnt in our sleep. Anyways... Happy holidays. This story time is how I purposely got pregnant so my boyfriend wouldn't leave our relationship or leave me. So I've been with my boyfriend for six years and we started dating since we were both 19. When it came to the relationship, I was more so the breadwinner. I paid most of the dates and I was there for him emotionally. I would invest hundreds of dollars into his business ideas that failed, unfortunately. We even got an apartment and at one point I was working, going to school and paying for all of the bills, cooking, cleaning, and I never asked anything of him because I didn't want him to see me as a gold digger. 
and he would spend time playing video games and working on his rap music. It wasn't the best, but I believed in his dream. So I basically took care of him. A couple of years later, his grandfather passed and left him half a million dollars in his work. And at the time, he started to get really distant. He was using that money and never spent any money. I expressed my concerns, and he said that he was done with the relationship. And from that moment, I lied and said I was pregnant. If you want to know what happened, at this is part two of how I purposely got pregnant so my boyfriend wouldn't leave our relationship. So, like I said, he was given half a million dollars from his grandpa's will and wanted to leave me. So, I lied and said I was pregnant. Now, I wasn't upset that he wouldn't give me part of the money. I always had my own money, and quite frankly, most of it would go to him. I was just hurt because I sacrificed and invested so much into this man to prosper. And once he was financially stable, he wanted to leave me. Now, at this time, I wasn't physically pregnant. I lied. Now, when he found out, he stayed with me and I stopped taking birth control. So literally within three weeks later, I got pregnant. And even though he was with me, he wasn't really with me. He really didn't come to none of the appointments and wouldn't check up on me. He became mean and started cheating on me. There's more to the story. Come back for part three. This is part three of how I purposely got pregnant so my boyfriend wouldn't leave our relationship. So, like I said before, I got pregnant and then he started to act really distant and he cheated on me. He told me he wanted to leave the relationship multiple times, but then again, his actions showed different because he'd always come around and did things that people in relationships would do. And around this time, money started to get tight. I would ask him if he could pay for certain things and he would refuse and then started to say I was only with him for money. But... What was crazy to me is that most of the relationship, he had nothing, and I was the one working. And still, when I was pregnant, I was the one working. And with the money he had got, he would buy himself nice clothes, got himself a car. And the girl he was cheating on me with, he bought her the most expensive clothes. And I wanted the relationship so bad that I allowed him to have side chicks. I never asked him questions, and he still never wanted me. A week before the baby's due date, he completely left me and went with the girl he was cheating on me with. If you want to know what I did after that, this is part four of how I purposely got pregnant so my boyfriend wouldn't leave our relationship. So a week before the baby's due date, he completely left me. I was devastated. I became depressed, suicidal. And because I was so stressed, the doctor said that I needed to calm down because my blood pressure started to get super high and that would be good for me or the baby. After the baby was born, he came around to see the baby. At some point, he tricked me into thinking we were getting back together. And once he had slept with me, he'd leave again and go back to the other girl. I tried to tell his new girlfriend about it, but she didn't believe me and called me crazy. I'd always see him make posts about her, spoil her, and everything. After two years, I got a therapist because I started to get anxiety attacks. And I found out I was codependent and I had abandonment issues due to my father not being there for me. And I was afraid of being alone and a man not truly loving me. And I allowed someone to treat me horrible because I didn't want to be alone. Regardless, no girl should have gone through what I did. All girls should love and put themselves first.